This is the Blood Red podcast from the Liverpool Echo, giving you the inside track on all the big talking points from Anfield. Hi, Jürgen. I hope you're well. Hi. Um, Jordan Henderson this week handed over his social media accounts to an anti-cyberbullying charity in another attempt to combat online hate. We obviously hope that has an impact because we've also seen two of your players racially abused on social media, as has Rinsala Babajid of the women's team as well. So despite the action that's been taken over a number of months now, how do you feel that we are again addressing the issue of racism in the circumstances that we've seen? What we are talking about now, now about racism or social media. So that's a problem. So with social media in general, we have obviously the problem that um, so far it didn't get sorted, that um, people can hide behind whatever um, account and say what they want to say. That's a problem I think we really, uh, that has to get sorted on this planet as quick as possible. Um, as much as each kind of racism, racism should um, be stopped. Um, and if somebody use social media, I I, I don't do that um, really. So um, and it's uh, for me the thing is, and that's now maybe the not I cannot speak like this about racism. I cannot speak. About, I'm 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 obviously not in a situation. I have no real idea about social media and the impact. To be one hundred percent honest. But uh, what I, I got criticized quite a lot in my life, how you can imagine, and um, not only recently, but probably as well. Um, and what I learned and the advice I could give people, you don't know people who um, are not interested in you really, people who don't want to help you with criticism, which can help sometimes, of course, don't listen don't listen so it's always that you you need they need a forum for that they need people that people really they need the, the 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 situation that you take these kind of things for serious that's how bullying works that's how blaming works that's how shouting works that's how like criticism too harsh criticism works so if you cut that side off then it's already a lot done and it cannot harm you and that would be my advice to the players and about all the rest, I honest, I don't understand enough about it, um, and I don't understand enough about the the real need of social media. I know there are some good things for sure, but a lot of things are just not important. And I think if you can, for you, for you as a person, if you can cut them off, then it's already um, a big step in the right direction. On the pitch, Jürgen, is this a week of pressure, three points off the top four and a two-goal deficit to overturn against Madrid, or a week of opportunity? Both. There's no opportunity without pressure. So, because um, we are in a, we are on the we highest level of professional football, obviously, we want to fight for the Champions League. So, qualifying for next year or being part of it still this year. So, yes, it's a, it's an opportunity, but there's pressure as well. And we have to be, we have to get ready for that 100%. And look, a week ago, we spoke about a wonderful game we played against Arsenal. And it was a wonderful game. It was a great game of football. A few days later, we played uh, um, yeah, pretty much pretty much the opposite of a great game at Real Madrid. But um, this game shouldn't have any influence on the Aston Villa game tomorrow. Is there an element as well of wanting to put things right after the league defeat at Villa Park, or was that done with victory in the FA Cup? No, <laughs> we played a different Aston Villa team, obviously that night. Um, no, uh, it was not done, but it's not. It is not really helpful. But of course, we have to put things right. That's clear. But we had to put things right that, a few days after the Aston Villa game, a week after Aston Villa game, three weeks after Aston Villa game. Things like this should not happen. It happened to us. Um, it was a really strange game, obviously. But um, yes, I have the game in my mind, and which way I will use it, I'm not sure yet. But um, yeah, we have to put things right, for sure. Thank you, Vinny. We'll go to Steve Wyeth. Uh, Jürgen, how much time do you spend reflecting on games? And was what happened at Villa Park one that you reflected on a little bit longer? Than usual, or was it one that you tried to put aside as quickly as possible? Ooh. You can you cannot put a game like this one aside um, immediately. That's not possible. 
Um, and yes, we have a lot of games. I don't know if we played the, the few days after in the Champions League or not. I, I don't remember anymore, to be honest. honest. But um, no, no, no. We had to we had to work with it. A lot of things um, were showed us in that game, which we obviously which were a problem that day. Some of the problems we had before, uh, some of the problems we never had before. And of course, we work with it. And so that's the job. How you, you work with the results. The the, the higher the stranger result is. Um, that doesn't mean it gets more necessary to work with it, but in this case, for sure, we we spoke we spoke about it and um, <laughs> quite frequently. And um, the the thing is, yeah, it it it, it differs about how how we how, how long I take it takes to me for um, getting over a game or, or or getting focused on the next game. Usually, especially after a win, my mindset is immediately at the next game, but we still have to reflect on the last game not all of these informations go to the players but i watch these games back and then i know better um what happened really in the game if you win it or lose it that's no that's not a, there's no difference between that i just try to understand why things happen um and yeah unfortunately i don't have these informations with the um in, in the interviews i give after a game which you obviously very often realize <laughs> What have you made of Villa overall this season? Not just from that game. They've made extraordinary progress. Um, and bearing in mind they have a game in hand, do you do you see them as serious rivals across the final eight or nine games of the season for European football? Of course they are. Of course they are. They are good. They are really good. Um, good setup. Um, made some good signings already a long ago. We'll probably we will not um, see them anymore as signings. But um, I think. Watkins uh, was a only to mention him. Bring Barkley in helped as well. All these kind of things. The rest of the team pretty much. Not sure if he cash arrived this year. Probably very good signing as well. Um, and these kind of things. So uh, yeah, really, really, really good side and, and good sides in the Premier League are immediately in contention of uh, for for European spots. And yes, of course they they are. Thank you very much. We'll go to Carl Woodward from BBC Merseyside and then David Charlesworth from PA and that concludes the Open as it stands. So, Carl from Merseyside. Hi, Jürgen. Hello. Um, we all know about how your results have been at home of late. Um, how important? We all know how important it is to start games well. So, is it even more important to start this game well in case, you know, if you do go a goal behind, you know, the mentality-wise of players, you know, the heads will go down. You know, how important is it to start the game well tomorrow? Important. So you, you always want to start a game well. So you want to have a good, good start, but that's not, they are not, um, that doesn't happen all the time, but that doesn't mean anything. So you have to be ready to, to if the moment, if you don't get the momentum from the first second, you have to get it after 10 minutes or whatever, or the five minutes, um, or these kind of things. So yes, it's, it's very important for sure. Um, it's a while ago that we played a home game um, and we, Yes, the results were not great. You are right. So we have to show uh, a reaction, definitely. Uh, will it be hard for the players going into the game thinking about those results in the past or is they just go into the game with an open mind? It's a totally different game to what has gone past recently. I don't think we have too much influence by what, what you mean with the past, the, the last home games. Um, they were all different and stuff like this. No. I don't think we, we will think about it. I will not think about it. So it's just the next opportunity for us. And it's a big one. It's a difficult one because the opponent is strong. Um, and so we have to we have to, to be ready to play a good game. So you have to you, it's necessary that you can imagine playing a good game. If you can do that, then it's already a big step in the right direction. And that's what we what we tried yesterday, what we tried today. So it's again short break between the games, but it's long enough to be ready. Any more cars? That, yeah, that's you done. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just going to ask another one about uh, Naby Keita. How hard has it been since he's come to Liverpool? He's had quite a lot of injuries. Um, has it been frustrating for him as a player that he hasn't been able to show what he can do on the pitch on a more consistent basis? Naby showed it. Not sure very often to full extent, but he showed it. He played important games for us, great games for us, scored important goals for us. That's all... Um, that's all um, the truth, but you asked the question probably because um, of the early substitution in the last game, and that was just a, 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 a decision I made in in that moment. And um, I we had to sort 
um, the game for us, and um, it was difficult to do that without without making a change. And then after the game yesterday, we spoke, and it's, everything is okay. I explained the decision, um, and he accepted it, obviously. And um, so now we carry on. Thank you. Okay, and David from Press Association, as the uh, final in the open, if the guys for the embargo section put their hands up, we'll come to you uh, next. David. Hi there, Jürgen. Uh, Hi. But, um, uh, earlier in the press conference, just about Ollie Watkins, he obviously scored a hat trick at Villa, Villa Park. Uh, that was a bit of his coming out party. It's his first season in the Premier League. Um, so I mean, he scored on his he scored for England and in recent days and against Fulham last week. Um, so I mean, I suppose you don't need any reminders about how how dangerous he is. But um, like, how, how do you stop him? What what are your plans for him? First and foremost, in my memory, a lot of players scored a hat trick that night. Felt like everybody scored a hat trick. But um, yes, you're right. It was. I think it was a a very good moment for Aston Villa in general. I, I don't know exactly the, about the results before that, but after that they were they were flying for a while. Huh? So um, they gave gave him a proper confidence boost. As a player, you need these kind of moments. And um, Oli is a is a really a really talented striker, and um, obviously um, the manager knew him from before, and um, it's a it was a really good signing. Um, so and the the, the whole. What is it, Brent Brentford? Where did he come from? Brentford, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the whole attacking line was was exceptional in the in the championship season before, um, and so that 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 suits really well. He's he can he's physically strong, so he can keep the ball. He can jump high. He's very fast. That's a good package. So no nobody has to remind me on how good he is. Um, and but how we always try to defend um, strikers, we try we, we try to avoid passes um, into their area, and that's with him not different than it is to others. And uh, and can I just ask about team news? Who who, who isn't available? To be one hundred percent honest, we don't know yet. Um, we played on Tuesday. Flew back on Wednesday, trained yesterday. Some players had still <laughs> felt still the game. So um, injured is nobody. Nobody, no, uh, on uh, from the game. But we have to see what we make with the with the with the information they give us today. So um, nobody's injured. But if we have to change uh, something, we will. You will see tomorrow. You've been listening to the Blood Red Podcast from the Liverpool Echo.